You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Hey, this is Noise Dosage Media, and uh, I just want to let you know that you better check out Bod's Mayhem Hour with Johnny. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to welcome John Lambert from Noise Dosage Media. And he is the director of Between Exhalation and Aggression, an extreme death metal documentary film. We're going to be talking to John about all this stuff. This film also features Napalm Death, Cattle decapitation, gate creeper, incantation, municipal waste, nuclear assault, midnight exhumed, frozen soul, 200 stab wounds, Singasuga bog. They are a band from Ohio, and they are killing it right now, man. So welcome to the podcast, man, and uh, I'm glad you reached out to me. Thank you so much. You don't know how much I appreciate that, honestly. John, you. Uh, the, the funny thing is I want to start off by saying thank you so much for let me be a part of your podcast and you're a pro at doing intros. I, I'm like, I'm like the guy that used the same intro. I recorded it once and I just, <laughs> just put it on the beginning, you know, of each one. That's good. Yeah. I want people to, uh, I want to grab their attention. It's like, well, what's this? You know, I know some, some people like 20 seconds or something. Some people like the more in depth stuff. So I've got a little flavor of anything, everything in there for everybody. So, you know, it's all good. So let's talk about this little documentary, man. Tell me a little bit about this film. All right. So basically, this film, uh, Between Exaltation and Aggression, is a uh, kind of the same thing that we've been doing for years, man. Just doing, like, uh, you know, pop-up interviews with people online and stuff like that. But I decided to uh, kind of take advantage of the, the pandemic of, you know, all these bands coming through my town and stuff. And I just bought a camera. I learned how to film and i met up with some cool friends of mine i've let, met along the way you know through my podcast and stuff and yeah between exaltation and aggression it's just a, a bunch of extreme bands talking about what they love and what i love uh yeah death metal and extreme music <laughs> how excited are you to have this out man to see this documentary come to life and and seeing the feedback on it the feedback has been uh kind of kind of crazy to me I started kind of like like teasing things online a little bit and there wasn't like much grab like I don't think people understood what I was doing mm, for the yeah. longest time uh, until I released it and I think it really I don't know within like 3 weeks of it being released I was like oh you know I'm not sure if people like it at first cuz it's 3 hours long and then uh I don't know, something like took off, man. After like two months, like the band started sharing it like relentlessly. I started sharing it. I don't know. I'm just kind of grateful for everybody looking at this, like uh, this film that only I've done, you know, it was pretty just amazing for me as a person to just be like, Hey, like I did this and people love it. And I don't know, there's nothing better than that, man. Just something that people appreciate. Well, let's go back and look at it this way. You said it's three hours. You could have just easily, and I'm not knocking you whatsoever, man. Don't, don't think at all. What I'm not saying that at all. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm just saying if it's three hours, could have did like a part one, part two, or part three. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and that was the thing. I I was really thinking about doing that, but I don't know. Like I had multiple people say, like, is it really going to be three hours long? <laughs> um, and I was like, I guess so, because I had so much footage. Mm. I was like, I was like, I don't want to cut it. There was just something that like held me back from making it that short. I just, <laughs> I don't know. I think too, like as a viewer, if you hear about a, a film and then it says three hours long, to me, I would be like, whoa, like what is this? You know, like the metal gods. It just sounded, 
spoke to it me. sounded like extravagant to me <laughs> you know yeah yeah i get it i get it totally it's like i just said you know the metal god spoke to you you know yeah it's like one of the things you know when to cut stuff out and you know when to not do it and it's your project man and and when you came in to do this i know you said you bought the camera and uh you want to do this during the pandemic though but you know why did you want to create Ooh. this i guess i wanted to create it because uh I don't know. I used to be in bands and do all that kind of stuff. And those kind of fell through because everybody had other, you know, things they want to do in their life. And I was like, oh, but like this type of music is still like super important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, like having a camera next to me, like I could be very focused and still kind of support the music that I loved. You know what I mean? There was no financial I idea or anything. I, I, I was like, I just want to bring a camera to shows film bands that i love and uh yeah i don't i don't even know because like when i first started doing it i didn't even categorize it as a documentary it was just me messing around <laughs> there you go and you know what man you said something very very clearly there and i want everybody to listen to this when i say this the music is still around because we still love this music bands still love to play it and the key word in here is family. Every metalhead, I don't care what type of style of music it is, there is a family of fans out there who love this music. Brothers and sisters that actually become friends over this and family. And I think that's the big key thing right there that keeps this going. Oh, yeah. Oh, without a doubt. A hundred percent, too. Because, like, I've... I don't know, man. You could probably relate to this pretty easily is just the fact that like having a podcast it's just so much i don't know you just get to pick people's brains and that becomes into friendships and uh i don't know it's just a special thing that mm -hmm. you know your regular nine to five day uh it just takes you outside of that you know it's an outlet man it's an outlet for us to bitch and complain <laughs> you know what i mean and just yeah just be able to be ourself and and get to meet our I don't want to say idols, but people who influenced us when we were kids and we get to interview them. You know what I mean? To, to, to be there in person or on video or on the phone and be like, this is surreal. It's like, oh, my God, <laughs> I remember when this song that you guys did. And, and, you know, I remember what I was doing at this time. You know what I mean? It brings you back to that point where you're like, oh, my God, this is worth every bit of it. No pay whatsoever. This is worth every bit of it. Just to talk to those guys. And, I mean, I want to ask you a question. Like, why why do you do it? I mean, what what's your... At the end of the day, what makes you do what you do with, with your podcast? I hope somebody can relate to one of these bands and take them in, and it hopefully one day saves their lives or inspires them because music saved my life, and I just wanted to pay that back because if it could save my life, it could save anybody else's life from taking their life. So that's why I did it. That's why I still love to do it. A hundred percent. Yeah, I respect because, like, I... I yeah, it's done that for me too, mm -hmm. man. I realized this recently. Music is always like is the only thing that's been steady in my life. You know what I mean? I mean, I've had you know family members pass away. I've had falling out with friends and stuff like that. But like music has always been there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and music, uh, man. I've said this before many times. I'm. I, I know. I know people's probably tired of me saying this, but I'll never get tired of saying it. Music is an outlet for all of us because it makes you feel that you're accepted. It doesn't make you feel that you're an outcast. You know, you can relate to these lyrics that these singers are, or these musicians are putting out there and putting music to. It's something oh, that yeah. um, can change your life forever and give you that better perspective of, like, of being like, I want to stay here. I never met them, but these are my friends. This is my family. Mm-hmm. And I think the best part about this type of music is the fact that, like, and you would relate to this, too. Once you realize, like, they're all, like, <laughs> you know, they still have to work a regular day job to, you know, yeah, put food on the table. Once you realize that, like, it just makes the whole thing, like, uh, a better experience. Mm -hmm. Because you just, I don't know. It's just, like, in, in some other genres... You know, if you were to be like, "Hey, let's do a let's do an interview for a documentary," like they're gonna be like, "All right, how much money?" 
are you going to give me? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the almighty dollar. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I mean. Like, that's that's the special thing about metal and extreme music, really. John, was there anything you wanted to add to this documentary that's not been added to other music documentaries that should have been added possibly? Was there anything specifically that you wanted to add, or did you just say, nah, screw it, let's just go and film? Yeah, uh, 100%. I'm, I'm starting a, a new documentary. It's about the local scene where I'm at in Buffalo, New York. And uh, basically, I, somebody said something online about the fact that, you know, they're talking about, you know, being in the studio and being, you know, writing music in their bedrooms and stuff. But I wish I could have captured that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like crash into recording sessions. But the hardest part about it is a lot of these bands are a little bit bigger. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I would have to do a lot more more traveling and stuff like that. So <laughs> I had no budget to do that, you know. <laughs> there was so many stories that could have went into this documentary. Was it difficult <laughs> to subtract those from it? I know you mentioned that you Wanted to cut some away, but you just thought better and not. How, I mean, how difficult was that, man? I mean, was it just something that just told you that, no, no, just leave this in here, leave it as is? Yeah, well, I mean, I filmed a lot. I mean, I had like, like I was looking at my footage the other day, man. It was like 8 to 12 hours. I, I could have put into that documentary 8 to 12 hours of footage. And uh, there's no way that I would have got my message across of what I was trying to do with that documentary if it was less than three hours. Like, the next one, yeah, it could be like an hour, hour and a half. But I think, uh, yeah, it was really hard. Like, the whole, hey, let's take this story and just take it out. It was very hard for me because there was like 20, I think I interviewed like 20 people in total. And I mean, it, it was just a lot. It was very hard. That's all I could really say. I mean, I had many points where I had writer's block and that spiraled into me, like, getting in, like, deep, deep thoughts about, like, you know, even finishing the film. So it's just crazy that it actually got put out because there was very various things, like, mentally where, like, it could have been <laughs> sabotaged at any point. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, just because how crazy it got editing. You know, eight to twelve hours of footage, like it was a lot. And and that's the thing, man. People are like, This is so cool what you're doing. Yeah, it's awesome. I love doing it. But the work don't come in until you uh start to edit and cut and do stuff like that, man. That's when the work comes in, you're like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I got four yeah. more hours of this stuff. <laughs> but it but yeah, you gotta have the passion and the love for it to do it though, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean you can you can relate. Tell me tell me uh the craziest story when when you had to cut something out of your your conversation with somebody. We're like, "Oh man, I wish I didn't do that." There was one artist that I interviewed. He's an artist and producer and he was telling me that a certain band that got back together was going to put out an album. And I was like, "All right, that's cool." I didn't ask him. He just brought it up. And I was like, "Hey, do you mind if I run with this?" And post it. He's like, no, that's fine. Well, my gut was telling me, you better check again just to make sure he's cool with this. You know what I mean? So I re-asked again, and he's like, you know what, man? You better not post it just as of yet because I don't know if they want me to say anything. I was like, hey, that's totally fine. But, uh, yeah, if I was able to post that one, I would have done it anyway. But some people, man, they would have been just butt hose and do it anyway they would have just oh, ran yeah. with it but me i respect everybody who comes on here and if they're going to give me the time to interview them i want them back on my podcast and i want them to understand that hey john is a guy i can go to and he's respectful and he won't post anything that i say he'll ask again if it's cool to post and i wish i could have posted it <laughs> trust me i wish i could have posted it but uh that that's one and another one is is um when you go back to do these interviews and edit them, and you have to edit these folks, you, you have to. There's no if ands, or buts about it. I spent almost two hours editing, taking out us and dead dead air on a co- on a few interviews, and that's that's typical. But yeah. 
it's worth it, man. It's so worth it. Yeah, there's certain points where if a, if a podcast doesn't go well, like if, if there's a lot of dead air, I do question it, but I, I'm at the point where I just leave everything how it is. I've learned over the years to how to, you know, manipulate and try to take out the dead air, but I'm like, oh, that's a lot of work. So I give you props <laughs> for that. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like if you ask a question and there's like 20 seconds or 30 seconds of dead air, I feel like no one's going to be interested. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I, I just like, feel, I feel like, there, yeah, there should just be like a flow to it. And I get told a lot that, hey, your your interviews are not like questions. It's just like a conversation. And that's, and I, I take pride on that. And, yeah, uh, no, this this is great. I mean, yes, I think, I think one thing is you, you have to separate the emotion of being nervous to being calm yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. And that was another thing about the documentary. People were like, it looks like these guys are just chilling. Like, you know, like, I don't know. It just looked like you guys were having a regular conversation. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. You know, just like we're having right now. Yeah. Company. Sometimes the inter, Yeah. Sometimes the interviews online. I'm like, oh, like, why, why are you in it? Like, why is the interviewer like in it? Like firing out questions, like, and not, you know, diving deeper into it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and interruptions and I don't mean interrupt people. I just normally shut up and let them talk. <laughs> that's yeah. what I want. It's not. Yeah. And I mean, some, sometimes like, and that's the thing, like podcasts are a lot different than interviews and interviews are a lot different than documentaries mm -hmm. because documentaries, you just sit, click the button, you ask one question and let them talk, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you're behind the camera asking the question, and that's just it. You just edit your 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 stuff out, and that's it. That's all. Yeah, I, I just think that uh, yeah, there's there's three separations. I don't I don't really like getting called like an interviewer sometimes because I'm like you know like me and you like we dive a little bit deeper than that you know like mm -hmm. I don't know I've seen some really good interviewers and then really bad interviewers like me. <laughs> Like, <laughs> no, you're fine, man. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> Was there anything, though, John, that you wanted to add in this documentary that didn't get added? Was there something specifically that uh, you wanted to add that just didn't get added possibly or no? Yeah, I was thinking about this yesterday. <laughs> something I really want to do is just get in a bus with a, a band and film. And I think that's a really important part of a documentary, especially about extreme bands, like what they have to do on the road. So I don't know. There's going to be a second documentary uh, between Exaltation and Aggression 2. And I'm thinking instead of me going to a festival and filming like a festival and like the whole culture of that, I'm going to just get in a van. There you go. You know, that's going to be the other, the next story, you know, getting in a van while doing the interviews, but that's going to be like the side, the side story. I noticed about this documentary, was this film at just specifically just one, you know, festival? Because I've seen people going through like kind of like a flea market type deal, going through all the uh, CDs and patches. And I'll tell you this, man, even my mom watched this with me. <laughs> That's sick. That she, is so cool. She would watch this with me a little bit. And she's like, what's that stuff on the table? I was like, That's patches. She's like, God, all that, all those are patches. I said, like, Yeah. She's like, man, that's crazy. She's like, that's a cool idea, though. Look, look at all those bands on, on those patches and stuff. And I said, see, that's why I want to put a Bods Mayhem Hour patch together with different logos in my stuff. And Hell she's yeah. like, that's a great idea. But she's like, that's amazing that these, these, and I said, Mom, these are the bands, merchandise sellers and stuff like that that come to these. And I said, these are also other people there just to set up and sell stuff, too. But she's like, that's cool that they come to these festivals like this and be able to purchase things from these bands and merch tables and things like that and i was like yeah that's that's cool part and and she watched it she's like look at all these people getting along together i was like see the stereo you know what i mean and that's it dude that's it's, it it's the stereotype you know that we get oh you're a metalhead you're evil no we're not we're good people <laughs> you know yeah, and just, that's that's the funny part it's sad it's so sad <laughs> but yeah that was at a uh, maryland death fest 2022 okay have you been to Maryland before? No, I have not been to Maryland, but I have another friend who goes to the uh, Maryland Death Fest every year. That was supposed to be the last Maryland Death Fest ever. And I've never went to a Maryland Death Fest, so it kind of made sense because it said you could bring your camera in. 
so I was like, oh, shoot, like this is this is something really cool because I had like a lot of friends like as vendors and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I just brought my camera. And I think that encapsulates everything about the culture and like the people, like the, the supporters. Like I was able to get a lot of footage of like battle vests and, uh, you know, things that are commonly, you know, if it was in a documentary, that wouldn't be put into it. Mm. You know, like the patches, the vendors, record collectors, you know, all that. It, yeah. It's all like a thing. Was scheduling these interviews with these musicians hard for the documentary? Because, I mean, for me as a podcaster, sometimes these are very hard to do. It's hard to get these. Some of the bands, a part of that documentary, I already talked to, like, on my podcast before they were, like, interviewed in person. It was a little bit tricky. It wasn't the scheduling because a majority of those were caught, like, when they were on tour. You know, I knew exactly where they were going to be. I could find a spot to film but the hardest part about it was trying to nail it within a certain amount of time Mm, yeah because that was the only shot i had if i if i didn't uh get it you know they're going to the next city like they didn't have an extra hour to spare like they had to get on stage and play but yeah scheduling not very hard but uh just making sure i nailed it the first time did it right uh because that documentary was only done by my me i didn't have like a crew or anybody to help me which was very hard <laughs> learn as you go young padwan learn as you go <laughs> yeah yeah i mean but what makes you want to do a paranormal documentary let's let's bring that up let's reverse it to you <laughs> i've done paranormal ever since 15 20 years ago and I uh, got out of it for a little while, got back into it, and then I was thinking, you know what? I do a podcast for my music, my baby, but mm-hmm. I want to film these paranormal investigations that I do and make it like a little mini doc plus an investigation, all that stuff. And it's going to be real and legit. It's not going to be these fake bull crap stuff that you see on TV. It, what yeah. you see is what you get, you know. And I thought that by us doing this to the people who helped me, Robert is my bro. Copperhead's another guy who's, uh, man, he's a mentor pretty much. He he was a uh, tour guide at Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum for many years. Okay. Um, but he, you know, he's going to be with me. And I just wanted to do this the right way and show people that. You know, the cool history behind some of this stuff. A lot of this history is very ugly of what happened. But just to go to these locations and prove that there is something out there, even to the non believers, if you believe it that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. I, I, that's that if it's not if that if that's not your cup of tea, that's totally fine. I, I, I will not argue with with you with that. You know, that's what you believe. But I I, I want to go to these locations and film and document and you know bring these locations to life and get more people there to help these places because it's it's hard right now for anybody but i I just want to do it because i wanted to show there is stuff out there and plus kind of like a redemption for me and robert to get back into the paranormal if that makes sense that's awesome man i i you know i'll be watching it yeah Yeah. like i uh i think they're like we said earlier there's people that like that kind of stuff like (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. the type of music we listen to and uh yeah if you can nail it man documentaries as long as you're passionate about it man what you're talking about it's gonna turn out good you know what i mean i hope so and uh, and i don't like i told you earlier i don't know when the these are going to post because you go and you do these investigations do these interviews and and put it all together it takes time <laughs> just like our babies our podcasts you know it it takes time so I'm definitely going to have to have somebody to step in and help editing with the video. And uh, hopefully the guy I got in mind can help out. Hint, hint. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I just forward this to him. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, I'm anxious to get it off the ground, but I'm, I'm, we're in no hurry. You know what I mean? It's not like we're, we're going to several locations. We've we've got you know permission already to be there. But um, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I want to. That's we, cool, man. I've been getting into, uh, like, horror podcasts. like Oh, yeah. And, you know, sometimes movies, they're they're creepy, right? Oh, yeah. You hear the story. But, 
like if you're just like listening to a podcast and you're in the wrong atmosphere or technically the right atmosphere uh it'll be even creepier than the actual movie oh yeah, yeah. Like, that's for sure and and i'm glad you mentioned that because i told you earlier that uh, I, I i am now implementing uh horror interviews into bod's mayhem hour so just whenever i get one i'll throw it up on on the podcast so i've got two already lined out yeah that's up. really cool i mean that you're that you're starting to you know mesh into people in the horror film industry you know like i started reaching out to like music videographers that was my kind of next step in mm-hmm. my podcast but uh I don't know. Are they pretty accessible? Like those sure. Four? I always say, man, all I can do is say no. <laughs> Just reach out to them and see, you know? Yeah, and that's, and that's the thing, dude. Like, that is the thing. I'm glad that you said that because, like, there's been people that have asked me, like, hey, like, how did you get a hold of X, Y, and Z? I'm like, dude, yep. the worst thing that these people can say is no or they don't respond. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not and, giving up. I'm not giving up on getting Corey Taylor on my show. I'm not giving up on getting someone from Metallica on my show. I'm not giving up on this by any means whatsoever. I'm not giving up on this. Yeah, don't give up, man. Do not give up. Who is your greatest guess so far? You're not greatest, but like best guest. I mean, that could go either way. Are you talking about like nationally, locally, or just just anybody in general? Just in general, everyone. Like of somebody them. that somebody that you think that you couldn't get a hold of, then you got a hold of them. And I, I've said this, God, till I'm blue in the face. Zach Wilde is the one that I never thought yeah. would be on here. Zach, Zach is the one that I got on here. And plus, and I'll tell you the crazy kicker with that, he was not my biggest first interview that I did. My first big interview was with Doyle when he was with uh, Gorgeous Frankenstein. So I had nice. him on here. He was my very first one, and I was so nervous and scared to t- to reach out to get him. I, I was literally shaking. And I mean, I'm not even from this guy, and I was shaking. I had a buddy. <laughs> this is the kicker. A buddy of mine had to call him, Mike Couch. He had to call Doyle for me to schedule this. And Doyle's like, but you're not John. And Mike's like, no, no, John's, he's really nervous and all that stuff. And Doyle's like, no problem. Tell John this, 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 and then we'll set it up. And that's what I did. And, and Doyle was like, you could have just called me, man. I was like... Dude, I was so nervous, and he was laughing and going on. But he, I mean, he took that nervousness away. As as many people may think Doyle's is, is an ass or whatever, he's he, he when I talked to him, he wasn't. I've seen stuff where he has been, but he's got that dry sense of humor. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But he was so cool with me. But he was the first one that I interviewed that was really huge. But the second one, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to go back and look. It, it it was Zach. It was Zach Wild, I believe, in 2012. So that was okay. my first year of doing this. Wow. Yeah. In that, that first year. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, first year. So, man, I, Damn, I, man. I, I just tell everybody out there, I'm no special. I'm no better than nobody. Just, just do it. If that's something that you want and you believe in it, just do it. Just do it, man. That's okay. that's rad, man. So that that probably lit a fire under it, your ass. After a year, you're like, whoa, like this is this is cool. How far can I get? Because that's exactly what happened to me. I don't know if you know uh, Mayhem. Yeah, the band Mayhem. Yeah. Yeah, I got a hold of uh, Necro Butcher oh, after wow. like a year of doing it, and uh, I'll never forget waking up that morning because I talked to Gall from Gorgoroth, and then Necro Butcher. <laughs> I think the day after or the like right after or something like that and i was like i woke up with just ha- my hair it's like like this this up you know but then i was like wait hold up these guys are regular people yep. i'm gonna do it exactly like i usually do exactly and it went out great you know like we were laughing at the end like yep but how good did that but, make you feel though to get that interview under your belt and 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 light that fire more for you though to say hey i could do this for my podcast it, uh, that's hard because like well at first i didn't even think that was it was reachable number one because like mayhem is huge oh yeah like yeah like i mean they're they're like bands that could be on netflix you oh know? sure like sure and uh it, i guess it was just eye-opening to me about like how easy it is to get a hold of people around the world is i was just talking about this the other day is just the fact that like i went on my lunch break at work and I was talking to somebody in the UK. Yeah. yeah. Like, 
<laughs> like yeah. like while everybody else was like on their phones looking at like Facebook, I was talking to somebody in the United Kingdom. Like what? Isn't that wild? So with this documentary, John, was there a band that did this interview that shocked you a little bit that you couldn't believe they're actually they're in this interview with me. They're doing this documentary. Yeah. Barney from Napalm Death. A hundred percent. Just because of the struggle I had to get him there. Um I'm so I did a podcast with him like a long time ago for like a release, like an EP release or something. And uh, I was like, oh, like they're coming into town. I could just hit up the same person that, you know, set it up. And for some reason, it was just so hard. I got so many no's. I got so many like, hey, I'm, not, you know, let's let's not do this. You know, no, 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 no. And uh, I was just like, I, I was somewhat like kind of irritated because I was like, you know, I know Barney would love to do it, like, but there was something stopping me. And, uh, I, I, okay, so I was filming with Mike from I Hate God right next to the tour buses. And, um, all of a sudden, Barney comes with his lunch in a bag walking around the corner of the alley. <laughs> and, uh, I look at Barney. I say, Barney, man, we, we did a podcast a long time ago. I'm shooting a documentary right now. What are you up to? He goes, I'm just I'm just going to get my lunch. I'm just going to go eat. But, yeah, I mean, I'll do it. Give me, like, uh, 15 minutes. And he came out in his winter coat because it was freezing cold. And uh, we filmed. That's awesome. And that was that. No questions asked. Just got behind the camera. Didn't give a shit, like, what, what it was about. No questions. He was like, yeah, let's do it. How cool was that, man? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So did anything wild or crazy or maybe funny happen while you were making this documentary, man? Was there something just just came out of blue like that, maybe, or no? Oh, there was a lot of hilarious things that have happened. Bloopers. It should have been bloopers. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, blooper, the bloopers, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of blooper, the bloopers right now. So Don was the first, Don from Nunslaughter was the first person that I got behind a camera. Uh, he was awesome. He was the driving force to do it because he was so nice to me. And uh, we set up the equipment before the show on the stage. That got interrupted, obviously, because it was too noisy. A dumb idea right away. <laughs> First mistake. Dumb idea. The footage got rocked. So I was like, all right, Don, let's meet up at the end of the show and we'll do it again. He's like, all right. So we're starting to film and all of a sudden... This water from the vent just starts pouring down his head. Like, oh <laughs> like just, no! Just, just like in, in the middle of the 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 conversation, there's just water all over him. Oh he's like, my what is, god! He's like, what is going on? And I think it was like cold outside, and somehow it was just water from the ceiling just drenched on him. And uh, yeah, he just looked at me. He's like, did you set this up? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, it's, it's like something was not even meant to be for that. You know what I'm saying? How crazy. Jeez. But right away, dude, an obstacle right in the beginning. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I don't know. Give me an obstacle within your podcast, man, that you had to laugh at. Scheduling. Same thing. Just scheduling. And, and kind of the same ordeal. I was interviewing Igor. Go ahead and die. He, he was on tour and I was interviewing him. And just as soon as we started talking, man. Here you hear the the band out there warming up, you know, rehearsing, like testing everything yeah. out. I was like, I was like, really? <laughs> He's like, oh yeah. my god. He's like, give me one second. So it was sort of the same deal with you with that. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Or Amadeus Cavalier. I'm sorry, was it is it Amadeus? But yeah, that's yeah. that's that's what happened to me too. It, and it's tough too, like because I had a similar situation where like the PA got blown out for cattle decapitation. So Jesus. like Jesus. So, like, before the show, it was pushed back, and I was like, all right, well, there's going to be a whole bunch of people outside, and it's dark out, and I don't have any lighting, so we're fucked. And I said that to Travis. He's like, nah, man, come on the bus. Like, let's hang out. I was like, what? Like, yo. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's the coolest part, man. Just, just going with the flow and seeing what happens. How long did it take from start to finish to make this film, man? How long did it actually take? Right when the pandemic 
started to open shows up. That's when I started to film. So a pretty long time. Hmm. Like I think it was like two years. Wow. Ish. I definitely gave you a long uh, time to edit it though, to get it put together. I basically just like during the winter I just sat and just dwelled in my room and added the shit out of it. But yeah. So I, I got to know this, though, man. We are both music fanatics. We're both music fans. And and going to many shows, how cool was it to see people in the pit being able to just relax and be themselves and just have a good time, man, when you were catching this on film? You know, I think the best part about Maryland Death Fest, the fact that I filmed that, was the fact that if I were to like capture footage of the crowd or the fans at a regular show it's usually dark so you can't see like their their facial expressions you know it's just hair like just <laughs> yeah. all hair uh, but at maryland death fest it was perfect because it was obviously super bright outside it was outdoors and every single moment every single smile every single laugh every single like Every piece of Maryland Death Fest I could capture, there was no darkness. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes me kind of happy about it, too, is the fact that, you know, I got to capture those things, the emotions. How was working with Brandon Jones, Matthew Rucky, and Sonic Assault Studios on this, man? Oh, oh, thank you for bringing them up. Yep. I, I, really, I really appreciate that because those three people uh really and i'm i'm saying this from like the bottom of my heart like matthew and brandon i don't know them in real life one day we plan to like meet each other and stuff but uh, i met them through the podcast and they were like the driving force of this too because like they were to send me drawings of like you know the artwork like the cover and uh and like the tax, the layout, and everything coming together, getting piecemealed together. I don't know. It just they were like my 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 two helping hands, you know. Yeah, if it wasn't for them, man, it wouldn't happen. They they're just uh, they were very inspirational throughout the whole thing. What do you hope everyone takes away while watching this documentary? I know it's three hours long, folks, but trust me, this is well worth your time. If you love metal music like we do, what what do you hope they take away from it, John? I just hope that uh, my intentions weren't this before going in. But, you know, I've been thinking and, like, I just hope that by the end of the film, you know, there's some type of spark or inspiration to just create something, like, beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, whether it be, like, a painting, a film, or, you know, a new record, or just something, like, or just to get involved with, with the metal scene in and of itself. I mean, what you're doing right now is important. Like, I... I think that uh, if more people started doing what you were doing, it would be awesome. Or like, you know, documentaries, what, whatever it takes, zines, photographers. Like, I think uh, if the scene doesn't start, you know, getting involved and doing that, like it's going to die out. Or not die out, but, uh, you know, just yeah. keep it strong. I know you mentioned this a little bit earlier or talked about it just a little bit, but are you planning on doing anything else right now? I mean, what, what's in the works with you? What are you wanting to do, possibly? So right now I have two things going on. So I'm making up between Exaltation and Aggression 2. That's in the works. Basically the same realm of what, you know, the first one was, but with different bands and stuff like that. It's going to be very similar. Not three hours long, maybe like an hour and a half too. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I totally forgot. I mean, are, are they bands that you missed out on that you want to eventually get into a documentary or no, or you or you just want to just keep on doing other stuff? Usually, if a band comes through and I'm going to see them, like I might as well film with them. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've filmed with uh, Imperial Triumphant so far, and uh, I drop another one. Uh, like, it's going to be. Full of Hell, Monday, I'm going to be filming. That's going to be awesome. I can't wait. I know you had a lot of music when you were younger growing up, and I know you still have a lot of music to this day, my man. But do you still have a go-to album or maybe just a song that you find yourself going back to and listening to from time to time that you you can't kick out, John? You've got to go back and you've got to listen to it, my man. I, I know there's got to be an album or maybe oh, just a song possibly. <laughs> it's so hard, man. <laughs> 
I will say three bands that really uh really did it for me. Slipknot. Oh. Van Halen. And uh what's the last one? Slipknot Van Halen and Kill Switch Engage. Sweet. They're not extreme bands, but um I think those were like, you know, my my backbone where you got the melodic, you got the chaotic, and you got the uh yeah, just metal bands, you know. I tell you what, man. I, I love Kill Switch Engage. I love them. I loved them with Jesse, and plus I loved them with Howard Jones, you know. And it's so cool that those guys are friends. They they didn't let that come between them. You know what I mean? Well, you're familiar oh, yeah. with the band I used to. But it was so cool. And and I think that Kill Switch Engage, their cover of Ronnie James Dio's uh, Holy, Holy Diver, Diver, man. Yes. Oh, my God. Did they not knock it out of the ballpark, my friend? That was one of the intro tracks to my childhood, man. I really? remember listening to that and being like, whoa, like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> Goodness gracious. And at the time of this podcast, Slipknot's new album just dropped today. Yes, sir. So, I haven't listened to it. I have not listened to it either. I, I, I'm I a want bad to. Fan. Uh, yeah, we are, ain't we? We're horrible. <laughs> I'm a bad fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get it, trust me, but I'm a little nervous to listen to it. Because. Do you think it's going to be like pop or metal? They said know. it's going to be like Iowa, you know? They say that about every album. Yeah, and that it, it's more singing. I think Corey, man, his bands came in their own. I think the development and the growth of this band has just went tremendously, you know, out that box, and that's cool. I like that. Uh, they do what they want to do, and they make Slipknot music, plain and simple. So I have not got to listen to this yet, and I'm going to, and uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But to me, there's not a disappointing Slipknot album out there. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, this is just my opinion. I think all of them's great. Even the Chapter 5 was great. Every one of them. I think Slipknot in general, I don't know. I took a lot from that band, being younger. Like, just like the angst. Like, just being different. Like, it was accepted when you listen to them. Like, yeah. it, was just, it was cool, man, seeing that band when I was younger. And there was a lot of young fans, you know? See, there it's we very go. relatable. There we go back to the uh, to the phrase I said earlier: being accepted, yeah. to, to be different. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. And here's another thing too: Slipknot has grown. You know, they're not kids anymore. You know, yeah. uh, it's like, why would you want to write 14 albums of the same stuff? There's no growth. Yeah, you that know? would suck. It, that's exactly right. So you could tell the difference in each album how much they've grown. And people say, oh, they, they suck. Blah, blah, blah. Well, that's your opinion. That That's fine, good, and dandy. That's totally fine. I'm not knocking that whatsoever. I'm just saying that bands grow. You know, just like Metallica. Metallica is my number one favorite fan of all time. Or Metallica is my number one favorite band of all time. I wish they were my fan of all time. You know what I mean? But yeah. uh, I wish they were a fan of mine. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to hear 14 Kill 'em All albums. <laughs> I don't. Exactly. <laughs> you know? You know, Saint Anger. They give him shit over Saint Anger. Uh, I like that album. I still like that snare, man. I, yeah. I, I don't care what people say, man. That snare it grows is like... on you, don't it? <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a it's a mean snare, man. It is. It is. You know, the, everybody's like load and reload suck. No, they didn't. Load and reload is very awesome. Oh man, uh, Death Magnetic was my that is was my great. favorite album by them. That's a great freaking album. Yeah, that was like, hello, we're back. <laughs> and the funny thing is, like a lot of, I think that is like the most underrated Metallica album of all time. Sure. And it's, and to me, it's the most creative out of them all, you know, like instrumentally without a doubt. And that album also had an instrumental on it. The Black album didn't, Reload, Load didn't, but Death Magnetic did have an instrumental on it. That's good. I'm I'm glad they went back to do the instrumentals. I, I say that's paying homage to Mr. Clifford Burton. I would say if to go back to your one question of what sparked it all, it's probably Death Magnetic. There you go. Because uh, it was just a very weird. I, I was introduced by obviously the Black Album. You know that was like the first metal album I heard. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, you know I still followed Metallica, and I was like, whoa. Metallica is like doing weird things now. What else is weird out there? You know? Yeah, just just don't listen to that EP that they did with uh, what was the guy's name? Lou Reed. Don't listen to that one. That, no, that's bad. 
Yeah. <laughs> Again, my opinion. My opinion. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, that's cool, Matt. James James Hatfield and Corey Taylor is your your mission for your podcast. That is my mission, my friend. And anyone and everyone else that wants to come along this ride, I will. You know, I'm I'm here for them. I do want to ask you this though. So Dave Mustaine was actually wanting to get together with James Hatfield and uh, collaborate on some music. I mean, as as a Metallica fan, would you want to see this? I mean, me personally. I would love to see this happen and see what they form. I, yeah, I would, see, I would like to check it out. Yeah. You know, I was a big Megadeth fan when I was younger. I don't know. I kind of had a weird experience with Megadeth and Dave Mustaine because I met him like oh. a VIP thing a long time ago. And uh, I, okay. I, to be honest with you, I, I didn't really enjoy it because he was kind of not very nice to me. Um, I'm sorry. But, but I have to separate the art from the artist sometimes. And I think that... Dave Mustaine and James Hatfield together, they would make good music. I don't know if I would hang out with them, but <laughs> uh, I would love to, uh, yeah, listen to what they got going on. John, how can folks check out this documentary between uh, Exaltation and Aggression and Extreme Death Metal documentary and uh, just anything with uh, noise dosage media, man? How can they stay in touch with you? All this good stuff, my friend. So I have uh, a link tree. This is literally Linktree slash Noise Dosage Media. Everything I got going on with my podcast and documentaries, you can check out there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, everything, everything's there. And I just wanted to say uh, thanks so much for having me be on your podcast, fellow John. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> the good <yeah>. Johns. <laughs> my, I'm spelled J-O-N, so what, what's going on? Who's right? J-O-H-N. I think oh. you're right. No, no, we're, we're both right because we're, we're good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, sir, before I let you go, as always, would you care to do a promo for my show? Yeah, I can. Hey, this is Noise Dosage Media, and uh, I just want to let you know that you better check out Bod's Mayhem Hour with Johnny. Hey, everyone, get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link, and you definitely want to subscribe to that YouTube link because we got a lot of stuff coming up, and uh, hey, get me over that 1,000 uh, subscriber mark, folks, please. And I done told you, the 1,000 subscriber that I get, I'll reach out to them and say, hey, come on the podcast, we'll record, we'll eat a bologna sandwich together, and uh, we'll talk, yeah. we'll talk, yeah, we'll eat some, blo- we'll eat some uh, chips with it, talk some music, and all that good stuff, so uh, that, that'll help me out tremendously. And please, folks, go out and check out Noise Dosage Media and check out this documentary between exultation and aggression. Please, please give John and everybody a chance on this. And, John, thank you so much for wanting to do this podcast, man, and uh, thank you for your time, man. I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.